Hey guys, I'm Joe Duarte, former two-time MMA champion, and this is how mountain biking helped me. So when I turned 18, I had that crazy dream of becoming a fighter and I wanted to pursue my dream. Everyone said I was, I was kind of crazy, which I think you gotta be a little bit. Sold everything I had, 500 bucks in my pocket, buddy pass ticket, got on a plane, didn't know where I was even gonna go and landed in Texas. From there, I just went to this boxing gym and I started boxing at this gym and these army recruiters would come in and the guy that was on the gym was literally like a former army, all army boxing team coach. These guys would come in, try to get me to join, try to get me to join and, and after a while, struggling in the States and, and wanting to really pursue fighting, not having the means to do it was really the transitional period of, I agreed to go down and look at what they had to offer. I go to recruiting station, I show up, some kid is watching a video of watching guys jump out of airplanes, blow stuff up, repel out of helicopters. And I said, I wanna do that. And I want boxing in my contract. I went into the military, did a bunch of deployments, spent a lot of time overseas because it was right before the war kicked off. And then I got out in 06. And, and that was a really pivotal part of my life in terms of transition because I was exiting and thinking I was totally fine. And back then they didn't really, when they, when you got out of the military, they didn't really, they kind of checked you, they kind of didn't for PTSD and, and whatnot. But anyone knows who's getting out of the military, they just want out. And that's, that's what I did. So I got out and I continued my fighting career. And I showed up at, at a gym here in San Diego and, and just went all in to, to pursue my dreams as a fighter. That year, I started my career as a professional mixed martial artist. I had my first professional. Before that, I was boxing and kickboxing. I was a battle-hardened veteran at that point, right? I was a sergeant in the military and I had a different mental capacity than I did when I went in. And that played a big role in terms of my fighting career. As I you know, went to the gym and I started to train again, I befriended some guys there that were former military, former special operations guys that we all clicked because we're all in the same brotherhood. And one of the things is I realized all of us were struggling together. All of us had post-traumatic stress, untreated, right? And yet fighting was our therapy. Fighting was our, our outlet. One of the things that really helped me was that while you know going to war and fighting are totally different the mindset of the way you approach it how you do it tactfully and strategically is the same and that really played a big part finding my success as a professional fighter going into fights you know i had i had the experience of going to war so you know when people get nervous and there's always nervousness with every fight but i had done what the ultimate fight was and that was essentially go to battle and that's that you know obviously i'm not worrying about probability of dying but i'm not really worried about it and i think having that background was so impactful in my career in me being successful on my career that it really helped push me forward and then a couple years after i started fighting i noticed that i would struggle with controlling my emotions and that played a big part in my performance is as you move up in, in, in anything, in fighting, in, in any career, the pressure gets more, the level of competition goes up, in mountain biking, the racers get faster. The issue is, is that fighting on just pure emotion and mental toughness and guts only gets you so far. You have to progress mentally. You know, they always say being an athlete is more mental than physical. And I wasn't really spending much time developing mentally. And my wife, who was finishing up her undergrad at college to be a psychologist, said, I need to go to therapy. And at first I took it to offense because I really, you know, that's like coming from where I come from, that's like telling me I'm messed up, you know? So I really took that offense, but she was smart. She made it part of our premarital agreement and I ended up going. Lo and behold, I think this is probably a fate, right? Uh, my therapist, I'm like, what is this lady gonna tell me about going to war when she's probably never even left the country, right? So I show up, the lady's name is Judith, and she changed my life. 
we sat down and she says to me, Joe, I, I know a lot about you. I said, you probably heard a lot from my wife of, I hope good things. And she says, well, I know a lot more than you, than even your wife has told me. And I'm trying to figure out like, okay, like how does she know? Well, she proceeds to tell me that she was married to a special forces Green Beret for the last 25 years. And I thought to myself, now I have so much respect for this person because she is basically living what my wife would be living. She's living in those shoes. And one of her, her biggest insights for me was understanding that I have to be able to give time to myself to go to therapy and, and fix my problems, right? And work through, work through my problems, not fix them because you can't fix PTSD. You can work through them and you can develop tools. And so she gave me some activities to do outside, asked me what I like to do. And I've always loved writing. My wife said no writing because at that point my career, my fighting, fighting became my career and I couldn't afford to get hurt. I, I won a couple titles in, in MMA and I fought main event in Vegas, you know, big shows, fought in some amazing places, traveled all around the world and fighting has been amazing to me. But fighting much like, Mount, much, much like anything else in life is for a very short amount of time, right? And when I decided in 2016 to retire, I knew that there was, I had to do something to replace that. And that's when I got into mountain biking. I got reconnected with mountain biking through a friend, Craig Wright of mine, who I'm forever grateful to put me back on the bike. And it, it set off a wildfire. I spent more time in the bike on the bike in the last four years than I've spent in the gym. I literally don't even really train that often anymore. Riding bike has become my fighting. You know, it was my sanctuary, it was my therapy. And that for me is something that I look at now being an investor and the CEO of one of the largest telemedicine companies in the United States. I'm under high stress, high pressure environment in the pharmaceutical industry. My company has grown tremendously, but with that growth comes a lot of responsibility. And while it's good pressure, I also feel like I have a responsibility to all my employees, all the physicians that, that we employ and the entire network and as well as our clients. A big part of my decision-making process is my time on the bike. Anytime I gotta make big deals, anytime I gotta make a big decision and you're talking multi-million dollar decisions, I have a couple of rules. When I read a contract, I read it three times. Before I make any big deals, before the final signing, I always go out for a ride. And the reason being is because I have found that when I go through this process before my ride and I go through it after, my decision-making changes. And so I need to get to that place where my mind is clear. I can actually think through the process when I'm on the bike, I can do that. When I'm on my climbs and it sucks and I'm hurting, I think about, I start going through the process and that is therapeutic. And one of the, the byproducts of PTSD is my ability to control emotions and stress and regulate my stress. I've had stress gout. I didn't even know that was possible. I've had it twice in the last, or three times now in the last year. And the learning lesson was that I actually had it. There was two weeks where I didn't get on my bike at one time because I was constantly worrying about going through processes with the business contracts and stuff like that. So I didn't have time to ride, or I didn't make time to ride, should I say. And it resulted in me not being able to empty my bucket, you know, when with my stress, right? So that's one of the big parts of PTSD is you have to really make a diligent effort about maintaining an emotional regulation and then being able to de-stress. If you do that well, everything else kind of lines, but a lot of times with life and business, things get caught up and so it's very hard to balance that. The bike has really become an important cog in my wheel to make the best decisions I can make both as a, as a father, as a husband, as a CEO, um, as a friend and, and a family member. So I absolutely believe in bike therapy. You know, I live for the stoke. That's something that I look forward to every day. You can have the worst week and just know, hey, I'm gonna be hitting Big Bear or Sky Park this weekend, or I'm gonna be hitting Greer or, or wherever it trails you ride. And my one advice I would say is if it's, if you're having a bad day, right? Just get on the bike, just get on the bike and you'll find that a lot of the issues that you're going through in your mind, that you'll, you'll either be able to clear your mind and then find that, 
find your center and then be able to make better decisions.